Yep. Yo. Yes, sir. Ain't been good. Yes, sir. Another head for the hills podcast. We got like knocking these guys out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, got some good topics to go over today. You want to get right into it? What do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about the Kanye? Uh, might as well. Yeah. Probably one of our bigger bigger topics today. A little mm-hmm. light, but we're uh, we going to make it happen, man. Mm-hmm. So, um, Donda, new Kanye release. This was released this past Sunday. Um, it's a bunch of mixed reviews. Have you been getting that? You been saying that? Yeah, yeah, a lot of mixed reviews. And, I mean, that's what you get with an album that's polarizing from a big artist like this. It's going to be mixed reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, not really... Not really sure, like, what people was expecting. But how do you feel about it? I, I liked it. And you know me. And that's, like, another question I want to ask you, too. Okay. I'm not the biggest... Kanye supporting right now. Mm-hmm. How much did you think that affected people's uh listen on the actual album? Okay. Yeah, a lot. I, I, I kind of think that way too. I'm I'm a, I'm objective. I gave my honest listen. And it'd be quite if it wasn't for the podcast, I probably wasn't gonna listen to it. But just to give an honest review, I think I need to do the to do the due diligence of listening to it. I think I listened to it at least one time over and I kind of like by bits and parts listen to it because if you're not aware this is a lengthy album this is almost a two hour <laughs> album so like some always comes up at light right so it's hard to like really sit down and listen to something for two hours you know what I'm saying facts super facts um, how did you feel about it I enjoyed it as well man um, when I listen to new albums that release no matter who it's by I try to get out the uh, the mindset of having a predetermined thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm just ready to experience new music. Right, like right. whatever direction you're going in, I'm going in as well. I'm not expecting you to rap about this. I'm not expecting you to talk about that. Um, I mean, obviously it's called Donda, so I am expecting a little bit of talk about his mom. You know what I mean? Right. Right. But other than that, the collabs, I, I think it was they're, they're like super fire. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, did you have any songs that were in particular stand out to you? Um, my favorite track, uh, "Off the Grid." That's my favorite track. That's tough. Um, that's the jungle with Jay Z's called like Jail, right? Yeah, Jay Z. Yep, Jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Part two of that is pretty good. Yeah, part um, two. I think part two um has the baby on it. Right, right. Um, yeah. What else? The jump is all over TikTok. No child left behind. Right, right. And right. it's a few other jumps. Like it's to me, even though it's a lengthy, lengthy album, it's not too many skips. Maybe one, maybe one. But no. it's, I can, I can still can tell it through. It's not like terrible bad. Right. But like. That's like that's like if I was just put to nitpick about the album. From me being an early Kanye listener, and I told you I took like a a, a big break from him, right? And I, I guess it's just uh to the tone of the music today, a lot of repetitive stuff, and like keep hearing repetitive stuff too much, it kind of draws me away. Like the we off the grid, 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 grid. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like hearing right. that for multiple songs, I'm like ah, you know. With sonically pleasing because he's like such a, a genius when it comes to putting different instrumentation samples and sounds together. Is you I can tell through it, mm-hmm. and like you you hit the uh, nail in the head with the features on it. And I think he did a good job of matching features with their sound. Like right off the grid, that's a, a New York drill type beat. And he let Fabio cook, like I said on my status. He gave Fabio the ball and got out of the way. Like he just let Fabio just float on that jump. You know what I'm saying? He just mm-hmm. got his shit off. A lengthy verse. 
I don't even know what you call that. Like, yeah, 16, 32, 32. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, he emptied the clip on that jump, you know what I'm saying? And, and same thing for, uh, I noticed too, like, uh, the baby came. That's similar to his alley, the beat. And he was on for the song he was on. Mm-hmm. It was like right up his alley, you know what I'm saying? So definitely kudos to him on that. Yeah. Um, from my side, I like both of the uh the jail songs, the one featuring Jay Z, the one featuring um the baby. I, I wanna say something about the baby, right? Okay. He he actually can rap when he tries, man. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of them situations. I remember I first um I'm not sure what it was one of them Dreamville mixtapes with uh J. Cole and them group. And they had a song with the baby on it. And when I first heard that song, I was like, yo, when he's not like on his other shit, this he can rap rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and even, it, even on the other stuff, he he raps good. He's just like he's like one of them people who's just like repetitive. He's he stays right. in the same tone, the same cadence when he's on his own stuff. That's why, I, like, I like for people to branch out and work with others because it's gonna break you out of that. You know what I'm saying? Because you bring mm-hmm. them to their world. My bad to cut you off though. No, 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 no. You good? You good? You good? You good? It's a perfect uh, analogy, and it's like that's exactly what happened because now he's ha- he has to rap about a situation, uh, how he grew up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And because of the Kanye type beat, it's like you have to storytell now. He doesn't do his normal style of cadence and delivery. You know what I mean? Right, right. And then we don't have to say much about Jay Z. We know he kind of <laughs> that nigga's different, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would say this forever and ever. I don't understand how people say he cannot rap. He he's overrated. Like, bruh, like you gotta listen to what the guy is saying, bruh. That nigga's different, bruh. Super different. Um, I wanted to ask something, but I'm gonna wait till we get off the Kanye whole Kanye topic before I ask the question about that. Because right. there's, there's a debate going on involving him, but this will this will fit in more so with the Drake thing than the Kanye side or whatever. So okay. there's a song on the album called Moon. And this is uh, the singer Don Tolliver. Is that his name? Is it Don Tolliver? And Kid, yeah, he's on there. And Kid Cudi. So this is a this is a perfect, you know, collaboration that I didn't know I needed. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Um, the harmonizing. Kanye is he's not really on this one. He's on it. He's very on it, like very minimal. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's basically just them two rocking out. Nice melodic song. You know, I like the melodic songs and stuff like that. I'm with you. Yeah. And then uh, another my last standout because I'm you know you can walk around name a bunch of songs on this shit. The Jesus Lord song with uh, the locks and um, J oh, yeah. Electronica. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, talk about just rapping. Jay Electronica is he's one of those ones that could be different too. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's different. Yeah, and then the locks come on and absolutely kill it as well. And then it's cool to have Larry Hoover Jr. speaking on behalf of his father. Then you know what I mean? I love that. Good, yeah. good thing you reminded me because like I, I I did definitely want to touch on that. I love that. That that was nice. Hmm. So. Those are those the, like you said, the whole album is not a lot of skippables on the album. Right. But I, the, I can't think of that song that I just I'm uh, I'm okay on. But yeah, you said I can't really think of more than that one. That's the only one that kind of stood out to me. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. So as far as like how do you think this album would stand up against the test of time? Uh, I think it stand up great. Uh, like I said, it's just great music. So like, I think that that always lasts, you know. Yeah. Granted, if you don't really care for some of the lyrics, like how I said and stuff like that, the repetitiveness of it, mm-hmm. but it's just if you if you're a music person, which like a lot of people are, you're gonna appreciate this album for years and years <laughs> to come. 
definitely definitely can agree with that. Production wise, you know what you're gonna get with Kanye. Uh huh. Um, entertainment wise, you know what you're gonna get with Kanye. And I, I'm not gonna say feature wise, you're gonna know what you're gonna get because I wasn't expecting all this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, makes sense yeah. though. Twenty six songs or something on this. Mm-hmm. And like I counted, like unique features, at least thirty unique. Some people want to jump more than uh once, but like thirty people. That's just the artist. And then you go into like it was like a lot of credit as far as like producing and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So a mm-hmm. lot of hands went into this album. Mm-hmm. And um. You said 30 unique features? Yeah, at least 30 unique. You know what I'm saying? At least like one placing on the jump. Like I said, some people mm-hmm. was on the jump twice, but it was like 30 people, 30 different artists. You know what I'm saying? When I counted that jump. Okay. So that's a perfect segue into the next branch of the conversation, which is apparently there should have been more. <laughs> yeah, a lot more. <laughs> some artists are holding grudges against Kanye. Because he hit them up to work on the album. Obviously, they must have worked on it. And they didn't make it. I know you got more details on it than I do. So what do you have as far as like that goes? Yeah, man. My man, yay. Upset it. The GOAT. The God. Soldier Boy, man. Soldier Boy was supposed to be on uh, um, one of the songs. Um, and it just didn't pan out for him. And just me hearing that track. I don't think Soldier Boy would have um, been good for that type. It was a more of a melodic song. Right. With y'all with Young Thug on it. Okay, got you. So it, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't going to be a good parent for that. And I think I kind of heard um, some of Soldier Boy's verse or something like that. And nah, that just wasn't going to be good, bro. Mm-hmm. So he, you know what I'm saying. Went on his normal social media tirade, calling Kanye and all type of bees and all that, and wants to box him. Wants to box him, threatening with a diss track, which allegedly might be dropping tonight at midnight. <laughs> it was uh, was it? I think it was remote control. You're supposed to be on. Yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. So yeah, I, I, you know, so I did my due diligence, went back and listened to that track. And I'm like, oh, nah, that wasn't the one for you, soldier. And he probably Kanye probably knew that. Yeah, you know? he, he released text different. messages and all that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. If you did the work with the album, if you don't make the album, I get it. You being mad, but well, we know Soldier Boy's extra anyway. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you can't be mad at him. This is this is typical Soldier Boy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he wasn't the only one though. Yeah, all right, let's get to the who next. Chris Brown was allegedly mad. Breezy. Even though Breezy. I, I, I believe Chris Brown was actually on the album, but I think he just toned down Chris Brown's uh appearance on the album. And I think that kind of upset him. And he much to what Soldier Boy did, called him all type of bitches and all that. Medium, but he didn't challenge him to a a boxing match or threaten to diss him in a, on on wax. Right, and because of that, uh, I heard that they've since talked it out, came to an agreement, and now they're back cool again. That's that's what the reports are saying. Mm-hmm. I think uh, he tried to reach out to Soldier, but you know Soldier Boy riled up. Um, I think Kanye uh, blamed the label. Mm-hmm. That's why. I, Soldier didn't make it, but Soldier, <laughs> Big Soldier ain't trying to hit that man. <laughs> yeah. It's time to throw hands, man. <laughs> yeah, at, 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 the, at the end of the day, <laughs> the label might have label might have had the final say so, but I don't, I don't know. They they let a lot of other stuff slide. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think Soldier Boy yeah. was still saying he should have called him this, that, and the third. And I'm like, bro, yeah, you can, you can, <laughs> you, can, you can communicate. It ain't, you know what I mean? Uh huh. But it's so been tough though. Probably... So segueing from that to if the uh-huh. album was put out earlier than Kanye wanted, maybe he doesn't have that time to call. Nah, I don't know though. 
The album came out Sunday. Mm-hmm. If he wasn't expecting for it to come out that Kanye, Sunday, Kanye won Kanye the posted allegedly. A, he posted about it, though, that Sunday. Okay. I'm trying to shoot my like, mask on bail. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just... I, I'm... I, I'm not side with Soldier Boy, but Kanye couldn't. At least text. They they was texting. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We could have sent a quick little text. The same amount of time it takes you to post that post that story. You could have sent that text out, bro. Like hit the people up first. The worst thing you can do in any situation is let a nigga find out somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Kanye, yeah. So I don't know. I would have reached out. Like, damn, this shit fell through. They they wasn't fucking with Eli like I thought they was. Let me call this nigga before he, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and the perfect yeah. scenario been straight, but I don't know, my man, private thing about other stuff. That's true too. Still got hit niggas up there, man. All, <laughs> all excuses right there, man. Yeah, but segueing from that, what was was? Oh, hold on, was that it though? As far as like artists. I think so. That's all far as I heard. I mean, of course, it was people who probably didn't make it, but I think those are the main people who were disgruntled about it at, <laughs> via and, internet. And of course, we had our internet trolls, our Twitter trolls, because then it started a mass tweeting of, uh, yeah, I ain't gonna hold you. I was supposed to be on the album too, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and left me off and shit. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to get the jokes with everything. Um, as far as, like, the Drake uh, rollout, too, a lot of his antics, are, I'm not going to call them antics, but a lot of his, you know, promo rollout is sparking debates and going viral as well. Because I don't know if you've seen, you know, he has, the like you uh, brought up earlier, at least off air, how he's doing the billboard thing. Mm-hmm. People have been making their own billboards uh representing their own city <laughs> saying that they're gonna be on the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. So I'ma let you I'ma let you get to the I'ma let you like spearhead this whole Drake thing, right? Okay. But before we started, I wanted to bring up um a debate that was sparked by Drake unintentionally, right? Okay. Or maybe he might be a little smaller than like you know, maybe then it's low key intentional. I don't know. So you know how he's dropping these billboards in different areas with the uh, the feature artists in whatever area they're in. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. So in New York, there's a billboard that says, Hey New York, the gold is on C L B. And why initial reports indicated that this was Jay-Z on the verse. A massive debate has since sparked, and now we're getting rumors of Jadakiss, which for the life of me, I can't think why anybody thinks he's the good in New York, but okay. Um, Nas, Jay-Z, I, I, I shouldn't even read this one, but because of Fat Joe, <laughs> Nah, um, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> so it it begs to it begs to offer like who do you think the king of New York is when it comes to music? Really a topic like it's just Jay Z people. It's Jay Z people. And maybe maybe he could do something clever and had Jay Z and Nas on the track, but I mean, dog, like come on, look how many times they linked up for a track. I mean, you know. At least, yeah. at least three times. You know what I'm saying? Come on now, it's it's yeah. Jay Z. Yeah, but I, I I just seen that debate raging, so I just I just like wow, this that, is that's really interesting. A, this, this is really a debate. Oh, boy, you were talking about, but I, I didn't. Yeah, I gotta get more in tune with Twitter, man. Yeah, I, I like I like Twitter because it's like I follow a few knuckleheads, and then you know on there, if you comment on something. If it's if it's a big enough topic, it'll put that on my timeline. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just like a never ending cycle of like foolishness if you if something's popping off. Okay. But 
do you think that Drake did that on purpose, though? Because why wouldn't he just name drop him like he did every other single billboard? Like I said, man, it, it could be calculated move. Like I told you, Drake likes to stir the the timeline, the social media. You know what I'm saying? Like with like album covers that are meme worthy, mm-hmm. crazy dances that are meme worthy. Be right down the thing, just the spark, um, just movement around CLB. You know what I'm saying? The move the algorithm. Man. Because he doesn't mm-hmm. have like your traditional rollout around it. Maybe this is part of his rollout. Probably is. You know what I'm saying? Right. You say he name dropped everybody else. Why wouldn't you name drop the go to New York? And that's always a never ending discussion. Like, that's why you see people like Fat Joe inserted. No disrespect to Fat Joe. But like, I don't see him on the, the certain album. I, I, like, when I seen that name, I was just like, okay, well, it, this like one of them. You now you, you take one of them little high school tests and like the multiple choice got the little <laughs> it's like four answers and it's just always that one answer that you know ain't the answer. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it ain't good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, when I seen that, that's immediately what I thought of. It's, yeah, you know, you just like I know it ain't that dope. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, and while I love Jada, but like I think he probably got a boost from the the whole verses, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People are like, extra loving him now, rightfully mm-hmm. so. You know what I'm saying? Getting his flowers now. Of course. But I don't think Jada fits the bill for that. Maybe you never know though. I w- <sighs> and albeit we looking, I guess from the outside in, but it's like. <laughs> What, what what would the definition of goat be? Would be my question. I mean, I only the definition I know is like just great of all, greatest of all time. I mean, it's an acronym, yeah, but it's like that can't be it. <laughs> how, how the, these debates go on, you know what I'm but, saying? But you know, you know, what I'm saying different people got different criteria, uh, style, and stuff. Yeah, but you know, what I'm saying it's always it's, it's a microwave. Like I said, microwave society, bro. So like mm-hmm. that versus probably catapulted him up to like a yeah. lot of people, you know That's what I'm true. saying? So I don't know, but like it's no discussion. Guy- Jay Z hasn't, you know what I'm saying, been making music or outside of this feature on the the Ye Jump. You know what I'm saying? He's been quiet. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Following yeah. music. So right, you know how that go in the microwave society? Yeah, I think he had that verse on the DJ Khaled though. Him and Nas. Okay, I don't even remember that jump. Like, yeah. That- um, yeah, that was uh earlier this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um yeah, other than that, before that though, what story of OJ? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so but but when it comes to goat talk though, and I I think you'll agree with this, that doesn't matter. Like yeah. Jordan has Jordan hasn't played in 30 years, and niggas still call him the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that whole thing of LeBron creeping up there and you got other people, you know what I'm saying? Like a right, lot of people sad. still think Jay Z is, but like you got people like LeBron moving up, Kobe, you know what I'm saying? So on and yeah. so forth. Yeah, and he is constantly updating his body of work. Like outside the verses, what is I don't know. I don't know. Like I haven't been keeping like tabs on Jada Kiss. You know what I'm saying? Right. So maybe he is, you know, <laughs> dropping albums in New York or some shit like that. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my vote goes to Jay Z. So yeah, me too. But other than that, take it away as far as the Drake rollout stuff goes and all that. All right, so a couple days ago, Drake released the cover, which we weren't, we didn't know if it was confirmed or not, mm-hmm. of a whole bunch of emojis, pregnant emojis, on a white background. It just looked like something you can make in Microsoft Paint or something like that. Facts. And, you know, that caused the uproar on social media. Like, what the hell is this? This, you know what I'm saying? This, that, this, that, this, this, this is cheap. This is ugly. Like I said, that guy just knows how to. Stir 
the social media. Um, then now. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just concerned. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm glad I'm seeing this. He had the, the whole hacking of ESPN, and I, I was concerned that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Drake normally leaves out with a banger single. Right. But now that I'm saying this, hopefully the Jones drops tonight, midnight, mm-hmm. and we get that, that long way to album. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's an interesting rollout. You know what I'm saying? That using too much money is different from a, a Kanye Jones where you got a whole bunch of different shows and merch <laughs> going to it. Well, Drake is rumored to have merch. Right. Yeah, right, it's right. totally different. Like, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't seem like you're using like, a lot of money versus yeah, a ton of money. But reportedly made a lot of money from it. Yeah, so it could have it could have offset it, especially them shows, because I heard they were selling out them shows in minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Heard it Actually, like we, we didn't, yeah, we didn't we didn't touch on that. So how did you feel about that though? Like the recreation of like his, his house. And um, just performing like those songs, not really necessarily performing them, but kind of you know you you've seen the videos and shit. I I, I say I, I I didn't really watch too much of it. I mean, it looks dope and artistic, and um, just hearing the theories around it sounds crazy. Like he was like recreating stuff from Dante's Inferno and yeah, he was stuff yes. like that. You know what I'm saying? Like representation of hell, purgatory, and him ascending up into heaven and stuff like that. Sounds mm-hmm. great and artistic. Like I said, I'm just not too much into Kanye where I didn't really didn't really wow. watch it, but I right. did listen to the music though. And then like sometimes some, that stuff was coming on like late sometimes too. I think that last one came on like late on that what Saturday, Sunday? It, yeah, right, right. So I was right. like, oh, it was good. Yeah, actually a few a few hours before the album dropped. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so. so yeah, like you said, it's a very a very interesting technique that Drake is uh Going with, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, um, I wonder if he kept it low key because, like I said, like it seemed like Kanye was stalking that that release try, date. Yeah, maybe to try to drop on the same day. Yeah, because like or do whatever he was doing. Because I remember last time Drake came out or Drake told him his release date, Kanye put a whole bunch of his artists around. You know what I'm saying? And that led to Pusha T getting info some from. 40 or from Kanye, and then that led to a whole you know yeah. what I'm saying, war. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which so, yeah. which is being highly anticipated and starting back up again. Did you hear about that? Well, Pusha T and what's name? Not Pusha T, but the Kanye and Drake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm alleg- hearing it. Allegedly, there's rumors of maybe Drake dissing Kanye throughout the album. Yeah, that's that's how Drake is, though. He's just like Jay-Z as mentor. A lot of subliminals and passive aggression. He's definitely mm-hmm. going to diss him. But uh, what I'm more interested in, the third R, Kendrick. Okay. I think I'm more so interested in that. Did you hear Kendrick's new single? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. <sighs> well, when you told me about it, I went to go check it out. I I had to listen to it about three times, okay. Just to make sure, you know, you know, just got just got to make sure. So when we talk about it, you know what you're talking about, and you know, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I don't want to be out there if some shit do pop off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't listen <laughs> to that. I, man, I, I'm part like a farming uh, account for that song. I don't listen to that song like okay. <laughs> that song okay. is nice. So. Why I say like it's gonna get interesting? It looks like mm-hmm. Kendrick is also stalking Drake too, as far as like releasing music or whatever, and trying to be calculated when he dropped. Like we haven't heard from Kendrick in almost like three years. Yep. And he comes out ironically right before Drake drops. You think shrug it all? That's coincidence. But then when you listen to the lyrics of the song, and if you know their background. They always kind of take shots at each other. Some passive, some pretty much direct without saying the name. You know what I'm saying? Like if you 
familiar with Drake. Drake always says he's top five, this, top five, this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Drake, I mean, uh, Kendrick has a lot of that in older songs. And right out the gate on his verse, I'm smoking on top fives. I'm smoking on top fives. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's just the, like, pretty much his motto on this jump coming out telling people, man, delete that album, delete that single, burn that hard drive. So I'm anticipating, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's like some type of conspiracy thing with Kanye working with Kendrick or Kendrick was already hip to it because Baby King, who's on the song with Kendrick, Family Ties, he's also on Kanye's album. So people like that, they probably were together to get to talking. That's how Drake got in trouble the first time. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if Kanye, like he put put maybe put Pusha T up or two, go on that Drake. I don't know if Kanye put a battery in Kendrick's back to go at him. Because like I said, drop him right around the same time as as mm-hmm. the album. And mm-hmm. like you said, man, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. It's, like, it's a lot of coincidences. So uh let's just say like you know things pop off and let's say cuz cuz Kanye could come out of this looking like a supreme mastermind if this is the case. You know, there is like slander of Kanye subliminal on Drake's album and Kanye does deploy Kendrick at this stage, what, what do you see happening from that, though? Like, as far as, like, a beat goes? Probably nothing too much, um, to be honest with you, because, like, he's, like, one of them people who's so big, so massive, pause with the fans. He can finesse his way out of it, just like he did, like, a bunch of different artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, when Push the Team mm-hmm. he was able to get out of oh. He was taking me to a dark place. Like when Joe had, he took the response to this guy. Make too much out of it. Just, I just love it because I'm pure as far as the rap and the rap he goes. I'm just gonna love it because I already can tell like Drake deal with that type of aggression, and that's okay. the same aggression T had and the same aggression that Joe had. So that's why. Kendrick, Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? He not with the shits. Oh, he's with the shits, excuse me. So he's going to come right for his neck. And I just don't see if it gets there, I don't see Drake really trying to entertain that. You know what I'm saying? He he don't want that smoke. Yeah, that would be the Kendrick and you say he's leaving TDE, right? Right. That's like another thing people were saying like, oh, now he ain't got no top dog can't stop him. You know what I'm saying? So this is the final album on TDE. Yeah. So you got final album on TDE. So that means no restrictions. You got Kanye West is like the machine. And don't forget his original machine. You know, Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that it might just be, you know, smart just to ignore that type of shit. You know what I mean? Drake, yes, it's, 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 it's definitely smart. He he definitely needs to ignore it, you know. So just get back to it. just keep making hits, mm-hmm. and like you said, just play the the bigger role. I make hits, you know what I'm saying, and just go ahead and get your money. Like don't yeah. entertain it. Well, yeah. I, I know uh, he's not going to entertain it. Yeah, you got the you got the sports center plugs. They posting you. They you, you crashing sports center and all that, and you got the the KD like you said posting the owl. Um, before we started, LeBron posted the owl with the six next to it. Oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> yeah, like he literally, like right before we started, literally did it and shit on Twitter. So you you got all this going for you. Like it's it's cool to just take the smart way out sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. But so, like, this they had the passive aggressive. They gonna keep throwing like little shots at each other, but. Don't let it go yeah. to the to a real main stage. <laughs> yeah, when niggas get to saying each other names and all that. Man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what do you so what are you expecting from the album though? Oh man, I'm expecting some some hits, some some timeless music. And um I'm excited now because you know so I was a little bit deterred, even though like I like R and B Drake with the call certified lover boy. 
I forgot who tweeted it out, but somebody tweeted out said this is a rap album. I think it was Ebro, Ebro from Ebro in the Morning, Hot ninety seven. Okay. I think he said this is a rap album. So, I mean, I'll take a little bit of both, but like, right. I love rap Drake. Before Drake started doing all the R and B stuff, that's when I started liking Drake. Okay. It was like straight rap, and like, granted, when people say the Ghost Riders, this, that, and the third, Drake <laughs> is an amazing rapper. So, like, at the end, if if it's the Track list I've seen, the track before the end, the last track before the bonus track. I think the bonus track is going to be the Dirk song. You know what I'm saying? That they had out, they went numbers. Right. Um, that's when he always gets his introspection back. And he kind of like just deep dives about what's going on in his life currently. You know what I'm saying? And he he just like be <laughs> getting the shit off. Like last album, Scorpion, that's when it's called like, as it's the date. I guess of the uh when he found out he had the kid, so he was like deep diving all that. Okay. And yeah, he was like he always gets into it. But uh, I'm expecting I'm expecting some bangers. I see mm-hmm. an interlude on there. That's like another signature I like from Drake. Drake always mm-hmm. has good interludes. Mm-hmm. Always like like you say like melodic stuff. Mm-hmm. That should be a nice melodic interlude. So yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. Just like you said, hits. Um, something like a vibe too. When you ain't listening to the super the super hardcore rap shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, like I said, he's a great rapper, but you know, he's like that other level where you could just kinda lay back and listen to him. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, so that's as long as he's given that, you know, that's cool. But like I said about the Kanye thing, you just kinda go into it with no expectations. You just you just know it's Drake. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But but yeah, no expectations for real, for real. And see see what kind of what kind of direction he take you in this shit. That's all. Right. Yeah. He always kind of like reinvents himself a little bit. Whether it be like people say he stuff, he's gonna introduce maybe some new sounds and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? He always had like the the grunge stuff, like when he was uh what was that? That double album. The one was before Scorpion? Scorpion. The playlist oh, job. Um... He was more so on this UK vibe, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh Scorpion, rap show, then he had like uh like what's the hotline bling, just different type of sounds, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So we 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 not, you know, we're not worried about Drake. We know we're right. gonna get with Drake. It's gonna be good. Yeah. Um I don't know why people are even worried about Kanye. At this point, you know you you know what you're gonna get with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it might might be different styles, but at this point, these dudes are like iconic professionals. So whatever they're doing, you know you're going to get a great version of it. You know what I mean? Correct. So yeah, interesting to see where this all goes. Um, a quake, a quake, Kendrick up in there. See what he has to say. Oh, see what's yeah. going on. With him. I'm waiting on that. Where has Pusha T been at? I've been cooling. Yeah, cool. Man. Man, hello. <laughs> and it's crazy. That's like that's like another coincidence thing. Like uh, we don't really know what it means, the whole um conversation that Kanye put up posted with the whole Joker face and then added push a teaser. It was like kind of random and said I'm I'm tired of getting picked on by like jock kids like you and all that. Oh, that's man. like another like thing I'm thinking about. Okay, he's like Looking for reinforcements, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if he's going to push the T going to come out again or what, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah. Hey, hey, Kanye, I got, I got you, man. You know, this is freebie. I, I can't, I can't say free idea because you're a billionaire. Let me hold something, man. <laughs> hey, push a T, Kendrick, the new clips, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, man. <laughs> That'll be dope. <laughs> Eclipse 2022, man. You know, and then the other one be off his uh his gospel bag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, malice. Yeah, or no malice now. Yeah, no malice. <laughs> <Yeah>, so, <clears throat> so we was talking about how Drake was like rolling the the stuff out on ESPN and all that hacking sports and the quote unquote hacking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Was we done with the music front first? Will I transition to the little sports? 
Uh, I think so. Yeah, I still think so. Got my little crazy conspiracy theory out there. We talked about the Kanye. We talked about Drake. Yeah. Um. So I know you heard of the uh, the the fake high school Bishop Sycamore. Yeah, you was helping me to it. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so this, when people tell you that you can literally do whatever you put your mind to. This is a perfect example of, of being successful to a degree. You know what I mean? Of that. <clears throat> so these mid-20, mid to late 20s, early 30s age guys, and maybe even older than that, because some of them dudes look like super old, conspire to come together to fake like there was a high school team, football team, Faked a bunch of credentials. Um, f- built up a whole schedule, playing against like um different prep schools, and even had a uh, Wichicom on there from the area. I think the matter. Oh god! Yeah. And was just slated to play all these like prep schools and these good high schools. So they approached ESPN. <clears throat> basically lied to ESPN saying what kind of school they was, this and that. Um, clearly had to lie about like their records and you know recruiting that how highly touted some of their players were. So ESPN, after clearly doing no investigation, clearly accepted their deal and put these guys on TV in a football game against uh, another five star high school Ele- well suspectedly another five star high school turns out they're the only they was the only high school in the game which is even more embarrassing considering like they couldn't even score on the high school team you know what i mean yeah, that's crazy <clears throat> right so the the sycamore school well they're not a school but the alleged school they end up losing 58 to nothing um, they didn't have the four like four names of the players. Like I told you earlier, one guy had tore his ACL. Obviously, they didn't know it at that point, but he was like hurt, stretched out, holding his knee. And you can hear the commentator say, "Cause they used to be doing like Sunday night football and stuff too." I can't think of his name, but it's White Cuz or whatever. And you can hear him say like, "Well, number fifty four seems to be in a lot of pain and." Um, I apologize, but we don't even have a name for him. He he he's not on our roster. That uh, the roster list that they gave us, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so, because that had happened multiple times, them having more players than not listed on the roster after the game, ESPN did the investigation, and that's when it was discovered that. They weren't a real school. They weren't a real football team. They were just a group of guys like trying to get exposure on ESPN. Now you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's so like there, I ain't gonna say there's so many things to like dissect, but how, how, one, how do you feel about these guys not being able to score on high schoolers? That is terrible. I feel I feel bad for them. Like, how you not scoring high school? And you say they were like twenty, mid mid to late twenties and early thirties. Like that's crazy. (laughs) Y'all suck. Y'all don't need no exposure. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. No disrespect, but sheesh. Not Mm -hmm. even, not even a touchdown. Facts. And and secondly, how do you feel about? ESPN not doing the proper investigation. It seems like they just kind of once they figured it could be a good story and it might generate some buzz for them, they just kind of accepted it. I am shocked that a, a, what, a billion dollar company like ESPN didn't do their due diligence. Like, How does this like, like you just take it up on the whim? Like, I, I just feel like something like this should have been way more lengthy, you know what I'm saying? And that would allow you to do your research. Right. It seemed like they just did it on the whim. Like, or I wonder how long did they build this up to, like, schedule this match, you know what I'm saying? That's a that's a great question. Like, crazy. Then, like, 
So how did they even schedule the game if they're not out of school? So was the other school in cahoots with it, or did they not do their due diligence either to allow this to even go down, or was they in it for the exposure? So I don't know. Yeah, and that's that's, that's a lot another of thing. Yeah, that's another <laughs> that's another thing. Like, <clears throat> did somebody from ESPN like come to the conclusion like eh, these niggas ain't real? But fuck it, this is gonna be a story either way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, so you never, you never know. And I wonder, is that is that against the? Did they break any laws doing that? Like, can you just fake like you a, a high school football team? You can't. I don't know if it's. I don't know how unlawful it is. <laughs> you know, because you know. That ain't no black crime or nothing like that. Right, right, right. Because right. I'm, <laughs> so thinking, I'm, I'm thinking and I'm like, while the idea seems stupid, some meticulous thought had to go into this to pull this off. Yeah. <laughs> and um, ESPN high powered attorneys can't pull up something if, if they decide to go in that direction. Right. Um, <laughs> I kind of feel like I kind of feel like if nothing happens against them, I kind of feel like they they won't even care about this really. Possible, yeah. Yeah, like because what's the? I'm like, what's the? Aside from people now conspiring to like pull this off, you know, now they're gonna have to do due diligence. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely, definitely got to do due diligence now. You can't can't mess around. Yeah. That's all it takes for one person to be successful with it. Other people going to try it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And now you got to, now you got to worry about basketball. Right. <laughs> softball. Like, this, now you got this, anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's why they should have been in the first place. They should have. Been doing their due diligence, like they just let any old body on TV. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I definitely thought that was like a um a, a good situation to like quickly touch on and shit. Like yeah, that. I, you would think they would have like a division for that under ESPN. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like or a resource they can talk to, like like I don't know somebody who is aware of high school sports, you know what I'm saying? They just like this. <laughs> they just went on the limb. Oh, oh y'all niggas good? Okay, okay. Got a, okay, got a match out there. Let's send the camera guys down there. Mm-hmm. You say y'all uh y'all play where? Oh yeah, I ain't never heard of that before, but you know, I don't know everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah, you say y'all y'all undefeated. You got how many uh recruits right now? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. We gonna fuck with y'all. Hell yeah. You know, Bull party lines and they got like endless recruits and all that. Mm-hmm. So that that was one thing. Uh the next thing to quickly touch on, I mean, I don't like to say quickly, but I however, however long it is it just is and shit. Um did you hear about the Fresh Prince of Bel Air being rebooted? Oh, man, I did not until you told me. With all new characters, now, I, I discovered this today, earlier today. Um, I seen the video of Will Smith himself FaceTiming the new Will Smith. I'm not sure they're going to have the same name. I'm just, <laughs> you know, but the person who's going to be the lead role, who's going to be the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, FaceTimed them to congratulate him and let him know that he's just been awarded the role of the new age Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Okay. Uh, um, how do you how do you feel about all these reboots? Like, I, we almost can call this the the Timberland era, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Every time you turn around, it's just like, okay, they're rebooting this, they're rebooting that, they're rebooting this, they're rebooting that. Does this earn a lot of creativity? Yeah, to, in my opinion. It's like, even before this, like, I kind of felt that way. That's why I don't watch TV and movies as much, because, like, whatever the... They're not just rebooting or something from a 
that's older, like whatever's hot, they just duplicate that. Right. So yeah, I definitely feel like it's a a lack of creativity in today's and I, I'm really not really feeling all these re certain like classics just maybe need to be left alone. And if they do do it, and hopefully they do it right, and hopefully Will and whoever else and the other writers or producers that was involved in the first one, hopefully they can get involved in this one and, and do right by it. But I'm not really a big fan of, like, keep rehashing old stuff, man. Got to come up with some new ideas, man. It can't be that hard. Like, like please. <clears throat> like, it's just... Like you said, we're in that era where somebody see one thing be successful. It's like monkey see monkey do, basically. Yeah. And okay, let's do that too. We might add a little twist to it, but yeah. Like um at first it was cool. You know what I'm saying? Like like same thing goes for like these uh all these comic book movies. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When niggas first start doing it, oh, okay, this is cool, you know. Batman, Joker, this and that. And then you start getting to like these other characters. And even though some of the movies they do they do good by the movies, it's like you get to some of these other characters and it's just like all right, bro. Ant Man yeah. Ant Man <laughs> though. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like all right, y'all. Like, God, this shit ain't it. This ain't creative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like y'all just trying to cash out because niggas is interested in all these characters, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, I, obviously, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the reruns still come on super heavy, and they must still be gone or in some good ratings. Uh huh. Because that's normally how reboots reboot ideas get underway. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Um. Yeah, just shit like this. Just leave it alone. Like let this let this live on forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like why why get in the way of that? So twenty, thirty years from now, people gonna be remembering the new Joan and not the old one, potentially. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, definitely wanted to, to touch on that. What else you have? Um let me see. Oh, the Jake Paul fight. Finish with sports. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> the Jake Paul fight. He fight uh Tyron Woodley. Woodley. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. How'd you feel about this fight? I enjoyed it, man. Um, I think a lot of people kind of expect neither one of these guys are professional boxers, so I don't know what people was really expecting. But I, I look. I went into it looking at it like these are two regular guys that just agreed to a boxing match. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, obviously, they both kind of semi box, but Tyron Woodley is a ex UFC star. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Jake Paul is a YouTuber for the most part, so. I don't know what people was expecting. Everybody wanted Tyron Willie to knock Jake Paul out because uh, obviously because of the Nate Robinson situation, you know, people aren't going to be satisfied until a black person beats him up. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. So. Off of him just to get beat up, period. Right, right, right. I think they so, even think that. That's, that's going to be a reoccurring issue going forward. So, but like I said, I enjoyed the fight. Um, I wasn't expecting, you know, Pacquiao versus Earl Spence. So I wasn't, you know what I mean? Like, right. You know, <laughs> just a good entertaining fight, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm inspired, man. Like, I wish my YouTube could take off so I could be fighting niggas for millions of dollars and shit like that. <laughs> well, talk <laughs> you, about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How'd you feel about it? Nah, it was good to me. Like, I didn't expect too much of it. Like, for people who didn't see it, uh, Jake Paul won, went the distance, split decision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wasn't expecting too much of it. I'm not, Even with regular boxing, I'm not a boxing peer. So, I just wanted to see some entertaining moments, and I got that. You know what I'm saying? It, was, it, it filled that void for me. 
But like, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't really care for Jake Paul. I want him to go down too, but I'm not gonna be up in arms and talk trash about it. It's fake. It's rigged and all that. I'm just mad that Willie had him on the ropes and it didn't be more aggressive when he had him when he he, he had that shot when he knocked him up against the ropes. Right. Should went for the kill shot. You know what I'm saying? But like fatigue probably paid the fact that both of them was tired and. That that hit definitely uh, shook Jake up because he was saying how it was funny to him. I was like, I don't know why, man. My leg is so wobbly. Yeah, I, mean, I know why. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, it was it was a good entertaining fight. You know what I'm saying? You never complain when that, especially if I see it for free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's all free and same as and, and, that's, and that's another thing. Like people act like they be really paying. Yeah, for, for these fights, <laughs> and if you pay for it, that's on you, dummy. <laughs> yeah, like all these streaming websites and all these, like you know, the five sticks out here still be booming here and there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then thing with people with boxing, people like people don't. I don't I, like one thing I know is from the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight back in the day. Okay, a lot of people just don't really know too much about boxing, and I'm I'm one of the people, so I won't pretend. But man must be thinking niggas supposed to be like rock 'em sock 'em robots, you know. Right. People probably were expecting like a super slug fest, or maybe some people was expecting more technique from these guys. Like you said, these guys aren't professional boxers. Hell no. Nah. And I, I and I'm I'm I like I said, I told you the other day I got into a debate with like a couple of my bros and niggas like, oh a nigga got a boxing ring at home and all of that. Like that doesn't matter. Right, niggas got gems in the jump, but you ain't expecting to be no NBA player. <laughs> right, exactly. Niggas got niggas got football fields in their backyard, and a nigga ain't going to stand up in the league. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that that don't matter. Like that's that it, bias. It <laughs> yeah, and that's what I was telling them. I'm like, bro, I'd rather y'all niggas just say like you just want to see the nigga lose. Just say that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like. I had I there's no way I can combat that. I can't I can't rebuttal that. I can't argue with that. If a nigga just come out and say, I just want to see him lose, all I can say is, damn, well, all right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But y'all saying stuff that y'all know ain't true. <laughs> right. Like <laughs> uh he gotta fight a real boxer next. Like he's not a real boxer. Right. So why <laughs> he gotta fight a real boxer? Yeah. He ain't a real fighter. I'm I'm like, if y'all want to be technical, this nigga could be fighting other YouTubers. Right. <laughs> like, like, that's I think I think it's impressive that he just beat a UFC nigga. Yeah. Cause a UFC nigga, although that's something completely different, he's more inclined to know how to box than him. Right. So that's why I feel like it's impressive and shit. Like, I don't know. But that's just that's just one of those situations where he, people are not gonna be satisfied till he get not even get beat but get knocked out. He got to get knocked out. Yeah, he definitely, he definitely, yeah. <laughs> like he if somebody if he loses somebody with a split decision, niggas ain't gonna like that. Uh-huh. So who do you who do you who do you see like who do you think like would make a good fight? Anybody random that you uh thought about anything like that nah like i said i ain't really too familiar with this world so i don't know no especially good. he like he's not gonna fight nobody active he's not gonna fight uh a, probably a real boxer so i I, mean, I don't know like who's a, another retired ufc guy or uh, some sports guy or something like that i, I don't know who <laughs> right. did, did you have somebody in mind uh, nah, I really don't. I really don't care. Like, I I think that's one of the beauties of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like niggas don't be having no no ladder, a power or nothing like that. It be just be random niggas talking shit, and then a nigga might randomly respond to you. Oh yeah, let's set something up then. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of talking trash, did you see the the post match answer? Nope. All right. So what had happened was. Um, after the decision was uh, laid upon us, Woodley felt like he won. So he was a little salty and um, in and there. Jake wasn't really feeling it. And I think Jake laid out a, uh, a proposal that I don't think he thought Woodley would accept. So he told him, if you get a I love Jake Paul tattoo, then we could do it. And Woodley like, I right, bet. What's up? 
And then Jake Paul was like, all right. He, he kind of took it back, like, oh, man, it's other people. You got your shot and all that stuff. So I don't know if that's going to play out. Probably not. But, like, yeah. would you want to see that a rematch of that? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. No. You got for it. Nah, I wouldn't. I would. I would watch Tyron Woodley fight again, but yeah, it doesn't. Unless they're gonna do a way down the line. Nah, we just seen it. Mm-hmm, okay. You know, if it was, if it was like a something where it was like an instant classic or something like that, then you would be like, damn, I, I would watch that again. You know what I mean? Yeah. But nah, yeah. Go ahead. I made the money. Go ahead and move on. That's probably really what he was thinking about. You know, no bag, no bag. Yeah, that damn, this is an easy ass fight. I might have lost, but damn, five million for this <laughs> or oh, well, whatever they got. You know what I'm saying? Because Jake Paul got a purse, and you know he's gonna get a bunch of views on the YouTube when he posts vlogs and behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he gonna get money on top of money, and. I'm quite sure. I'm I'm quite sure when Jake Paul fight niggas, niggas probably be inquiring about that YouTube shit too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Tyron Willie might be a YouTuber now or something. Beat the nigga <laughs> into the beat the nigga into the culture. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, I I will I will see them both fight again. Just not each other. So what else? Uh, was that was that pretty much all we had? We get into the what the fuck facts. Uh, we had some other topics. I mean, we if you want to end it, we can go ahead and end it. No, no, no. I just, I just the I, Summer Walker versus her baby father, London. They had like a nice little exchange on uh the IG. We got London on the track. London yeah. on the track. Yeah, so uh, I ain't got my notes written down. At least All this right. part. Yeah, so you got it. So, so um, go ahead. Oh, okay. So, Summer and London, uh, and I believe Summer has an unnamed new boyfriend, and mm-hmm. London doesn't like how that goes. Does London doesn't like the guy being around the kid? So they had like a nasty exchange on IG stories. She was calling him out, saying he don't do nothing for the kid anyway. He's better for the kid than you are, and come get your car. I like cars that's paid off. And then I think you told me he said something about like you saying you say you don't like cars that's paid off, but you still paying for your body. And yeah, that Make a just just the ass and titties though. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <clears throat> yeah, before we even finish, right? I just want to say. If that I don't know if that's true, but if you can make payments on like BBLs and stuff like that, that would explain why so many girls are starting to get them. Yeah, and I, I thought some would have more of a bag to, to pay it off. Right, but it it, it it and we talked about this a lot, like a few times. It comes down to like your deal. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like that deal just dictates. Everything and see him London on the track, he's a producer, so I know he if he's not doing nothing for the kid, he's like going out his way not to do nothing because I know he got banged. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause these niggas don't be signing the labels and shit. No boy, yeah. <laughs> and I just hope like well, I'm pretty sure it probably won't be happening, but it may probably happen a little bit, like uh just side story listening to Joe Button. And um, mm-hmm. hearing how like sometimes they get jerked on uh certain stuff and like and kind of like ironically tied back into what we talked about earlier, that's kind of how the uh Pusha T versus Lil Wayne cash money started because they didn't pay Pharrell for that uh what happened to them what, uh, what happened to that boy beat. Oh wow! So that's kind of how that beat started. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully he got he getting all his ends and getting his chicken or whatever. Yeah, but that's that's definitely nasty if he's not taking care of the kid and he's well off. All right. So, question for you, right? Now, you see how, like, disrespectful and nasty this exchange was, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think that they really loved each other to begin with? 
Because if you love somebody now, everybody done been through breakups. Like, do you think that they were like really in love if you could talk that bad about your ex significant other, like to the extreme that they're going? Uh, Especially in the public's eye. Probably. I, I think they probably was. It probably wasn't like no super pure junk. Mm-hmm. But like that's how these people are now. Like these young are toxic, bruh. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> They're toxic, bruh. And uh and I always be kind of worried about celebrity relationships anyway, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I I'm 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 on the fence with like I You say you say they probably wasn't. No, I'm on the fence about celebrity relationships. Okay. Yeah. Um I, I would err on the side of they it wasn't built on a strong foundation, apparently. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because how old is the kid? Probably maybe one, if that. Like, how how does it get to that that fast? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> even with normal people, that's what I guess that's what like a lot of relationships go astray. When the kid in, and yeah. Then, that's what will be happening, you know? like a lot. Of, that's when like a lot of the breakups happen. Yeah, that's true too. But it'd it be because like, for the most part, it's just built on a poor foundation. Like a lot of the yeah. relationships be built sure. on like sex and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You bring a kid, and now the relationship is is, is a business, and don't nobody want to handle business. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. So, yeah, it's just. Very on for me. If I was to become a celebrity or any type of thing like that, if I didn't come in, if I didn't come into my celebrityness with a significant other, I might, I probably wouldn't get married. Or I mean, or date for real. at least date seriously. You know what I mean? Yeah, fact. Yeah, definitely not getting married. If I do, I'm laying down all the crazy paperwork I could to keep all my coins because that's what it seems like people are doing. They just popping babies out and. Try and marry you for X amount of time so they can get in, they can move on and just have that income coming in without them not working. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. Eat all your mm-hmm. success. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it you, you'll fuck around and think you'll be married to the love of your life. And it, it's been, oh yeah, no, we've been married for five years. Shit been going perfect. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then behind your back, the bitch go out, sneak out and get a divorce and shit. You know what I mean? And Start some fights up and some shit <laughs> to get the mm-hmm. divorce. Uh huh. And that shit. Yeah, I, I I couldn't like you said get the crazy paperwork popping. I might not even take it that far. We might just gotta be friends. Like I might be on my Oprah shit. You know what I'm saying? True. But I would still try to get some paperwork, even though like I, I'm not 100 percent sure. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's something you gonna be gifts for and stuff like that because i always i don't want you hit me with that or you gave her a different lifestyle type stuff even though you know what i'm saying oh yeah i, I could hear about that too yeah, yeah so, that, so like you that, with her for x amount of time and giving her x amount of lifestyle so yeah oh yeah so now that that what had me acting like on some weird shit yeah like like that he only trying to see me once a month or some shit like that the fuck this nigga? you know what i'm saying like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, like, and then when I we do link up, I'm broke, you know. I was like, fuck that, I ain't got it. I ain't got it, slow. <laughs> it's costume jewelry, I ain't got it. <laughs> nah, that shit, that shit, that shit looks spooky sometimes, don't it? Yeah, man. Crazy out there. And then if you ain't dealing with that, then you got to worry about, you know what I'm saying? The people trying to like set you up for is like, Rape and sexual harassment and stuff like that. Nah, yeah. All the stuff you got to worry about. Okay, man. Yeah, when you say that, you, I mean, when they say focus on your money and that's it, that's what they mean. Man. Yeah, that's is like I literally, I, I like I probably would shoot my shot at like a select couple of girls. Like obviously the bitch is probably two out of my league any fucking way. Like if Rihanna was single, I shoot the shot just for the hell of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I mean, and it's easy to say this 
right now. You never know when you get in the situation. Uh-huh. But that that would be my plan. That's what I would try my hardest to do and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But hopefully situation with Summer Walker and London on the track. Or, you know, hopefully they can come to some common ground. Get the whole co-parenting thing down. You know, um, successful producer, successful artist when she's active. Obviously, she got the kid now, so she's going to be inactive for a little while. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, do you think anything is mentally wrong with her? Ah, uh, I guess to some degree, under some definition, she seems a little off. You know what I'm saying? Like, from all the uh, she, because you know she always gets into it with fans and people on social media that sorts. So, mm-hmm. I mean, at least say she's different. <laughs> she's she's different, but could be mentally ill or something. I don't know. She's different. Yeah, definitely, definitely different. So, um. With that being said, I don't know how many topics is left, so I wanted to take a uh, wanted to take a quick thirty seconds to sixty seconds to uh, say something right quick. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with a uh, women's wrestler Daphne Unger. Um. She was uh, one of the main divas on WCW during that Monday Night Wars era, that 99 to 2001 time frame. She was like one of the main female wrestlers on there. And she also had like a super successful run in TNA back when TNA was actually something. Um, Last night she got on live and she was like very in a bad mental state. And um, she was saying that she felt so alone and she didn't have nobody. She was reading off, like, notes and stuff. She was letting everybody know on the live to um, let whoever find her know that her organs go to this place and her brain goes to this place, you know, and um, had a pistol near her. The live ended and it immediately went viral. This is around 9 p.m. last night. Immediately went viral. Everybody, at least thousands and thousands of people, everybody's trying to, yo, y'all know where she live at? Send the authorities, even like other wrestlers like Mick Foley and um, a couple of AEW people, a couple of WWE people um, was trying to figure out where she lives so they could send help. So, you know, time went past and there's, there wasn't an update until about two hours ago. Um, she finally was found and she did commit suicide. And just want to say rest in peace to her. Like, she's one of the reasons, like, I even started liking, like, the little gothic chicks and shit. You know what I'm saying? And, um... Just want to say, like, anybody listening that might be dealing with, like, mental health stuff, that you might, I know you might feel alone, but it's, like, it's definitely people that you can reach out to. It's definitely people that you could like, talk to that's really willing to help you, whether it be professional, you know, platonic friends, associates, like, family, like, if you really, really reach out to somebody, like, you could get the help that you need. Um, now, obviously, the state she was in last night, I kind of I kind of feel like it's just uh, humans get to a point of no return. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, once a person get to talking about where their organs going and all that, I, there might not be no saving them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to prevent people from getting to that final breaking point stage. I just urge everybody to like reach out to your friends. You know, everybody be so busy and caught up with what they doing in life. You know, 
a lot of friendships fall off. A lot of family don't do the family get togethers no more. The big Thanksgivings, the big reunions, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, life is tough and it's tough when you together, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just imagine like how heavy that shit is when a person feel like they don't got nobody at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just wanted to take a little time out to say rest in peace to her and uh, continue my advocacy because I'll always be an advocate for mental health awareness no matter what. That and homelessness. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah, thank you for that. And definitely rest in peace. It's like crazy. I don't know. Like I heard about the story and I thought they said somebody got to her in time. But then, like you said earlier today, then I found out of her. Her passing. Mm-hmm. So that's tough. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> other than that, that was it for me. I didn't have nothing else to add. Yeah, that's it. We definitely can. Um, okay. So, of course, we end these podcasts with our what the fuck facts of the day. And um, mine's just kind of, I'll say mine's just kind of cool today. You know what I mean? Okay. Like nothing, nothing super drastic. Just a cool little sports joint or whatever. So, the average person knows of the show Undisputed with um Skip Bayless and Shannon Shop, right? Uh huh. So, everybody know Shannon Shop's a Hall of Famer, and he's the younger brother of Sterling Shop. And Sterling Shop's in the Hall of Fame too, right? I don't think so. Well, he should be. Well, anyways, if he's not, he should be. Yeah. So, when it comes to Sterling Shop, he's a very talented, very special offensive player in the NFL for those years before he got hurt, but even more so dominant in college. Do you want to know how dominant he was in college? How? Without... Giving you stats, the next statement I give you will let you know how dominant this guy was in college. Sterling Shop was so dominant in college, South Carolina, the school that he played for, retired his number while he was still playing. <laughs> That's crazy. He did, get in, he did get in the Hall of Fame in 2014. Okay, congrats to him. Congrats to him. He deserves that. But yeah, that's how dominant he was is they retired his number while he was still active. Is that crazy or is that crazy? That's crazy. You you, you gotta be a man. <laughs> People, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Retire your number now. Hey Slim, hey Slim, we can't wait. Let's throw this shit up in now, Slim. They change your shit. <laughs> yeah, like imagine like uh speaking of like uh numbers being retired. They're retiring Michael Strand number this year. Right. We were look, thinking how much of a stable he was with New York. He's just now getting it. He's been gone from the Giants for a minute. Well, for Brent, a man to still be playing? A nigga still, bro, a nigga still playing. And they come to you like, yo, we got to put this in the rappers, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. That is <laughs> so that's that's my what the fuck fact of the day. <laughs> All right, so I got a, I got a crazy little fact. Mm-hmm. I gotta get better at pre- presenting like you, but uh, how you feel about rain, man? You said rain? Yeah. Oh, I love the rain. Yeah, that's it's it's very common and soothing. Okay, so what if it like rain like some crazy? Objects, maybe. What, what if it rains like an animal? Uh, well, then I probably wouldn't love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's reports, and this is not even a one off thing, it mm-hmm. happens like one time every year, I think around this time, around summer. So, in Honduras and in Australia, it can rain fish, and this is a like. <laughs> Crazy wind pressure when it hits like an ocean, a body of water, it creates like mm-hmm. this cyclone, hurricane type thing. And I guess it sucks the fish up up in the air and like it, and like nearby the water. 
Like, it's been reports that they've seen these jumps miles and miles away in, like, deserts where it's no body of water nearby. Oh, yeah, okay. It just rains fish. <laughs> like, that, dog, that is crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, I, nah, I'm thinking two different things. My, my first initial thought is, like, you know, now anybody that's, like, out here starving – and all that, and you're not allergic to like seafood and shit. That sounds like a come up, right? It could be. I think. Well, I think one John White. I think one John I seen. I think the picture from her doors. It was big fish you can eat, but like the other John I seen, it was like some little, like little little fish, like goldfish type John or whatever. Oh, you had to catch a had to catch a thousand of them John. No boy, like, yes, you use them, like, put them on sardines, put them on pizza. But... <laughs> Oh yeah, facts. Little toppings. <laughs> and shit. Go ahead. They said the uh, they said the, like the straight cats be going ham. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I bet. I bet that, that like I said, that's not like a that's not like a come up right there. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you but, get some but, nice size jumps. <laughs> yeah, but the, my other way of thinking is like, like damn, how does that smell? Right. That 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 was my first initial <laughs> thought too. It's like. Oh my goodness! If you don't get all that up, and like you said, it gets dying, decaying, and fish mm-hmm. <laughs> And then you said the Jones be landing in like the desert and shit too. Yeah, desert, so all, yeah. all, all that heat and like humidity, yeah, that heat and humidity, and, and then like the wind get the blowing, and that shit blow into the city or something. Yeah, uh. I, I'll favorite phrase that jump be in the desert. I'm getting cooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause that's a hundred degrees. Them things, them things bake, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deadly. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Why the why the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, give me rain some hamburgers or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're like just like the, the Disney movie. Uh, is that Disney? Uh, Cloudy Chance of Meatballs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cloudy yeah, Chance nah. of Fish. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't imagine that. Like, if it was some way to maneuver around that that smell that you knew was coming, that might be the come up. I'm allergic to fish though, but for anybody else, that might be the come up. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's dope as fuck. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, I guess it's been another head for the hills podcast and, and uh, books. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we've been not like knocking these jumps out like quickly and shit. I mean, it mm-hmm. has been weekly, but for some reason, these jumps feel like you know, it's like, man, we on twelve already? Shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Look forward to that that NFL special coming. Football next week. coming next week. We next got a special week. coming for y'all. We're gonna detail everything from from Super Bowl predictions to standout teams, standout players, man. Listen, mm-hmm. y'all haven't done y'all fantasy draft yet. Listen to that, man. We can help y'all out. Mm-hmm. And uh definitely look forward to that. Might even throw a little bit of a little bit of college football up in there. This the this the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Merlin service I'm back. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. All right. Well, we're not gonna do the college thing, y'all. I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, NFL special. This shit is gonna be that shit is gonna be lit. But uh until next time. Head for the hills. We out. Bye.